No rush, no crash. That's what I always say. Welcome to Yes Auto. I'm Cam Tate, and this week I'm going to take our Friday news show in a slightly different direction. We were given the opportunity to interview Lamborghini CEO and former Ferrari F1 team principal Stefano Domenicali about pretty much everything from its V12 hypercars to supercapacitor powered EVs. Now most of Europe is still very much under lockdown, so we had to conduct the interview with Stefano over a video call. And inevitably, we ran into some technical problems. So I'm going to apologize in advance if the video and audio quality isn't quite up to standard, but we've tried really hard to piece together a video on this, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. So without further ado, here's what happened when I met Stefano Domenicali. Stefano, we've yet to have a major motor show in 2020 because of coronavirus. Um, do you still think the motor show is still of value to Lamborghini? Well, as you know, Cameron, the strategy for Lamborghini, I've stated that in times where there were no virus, no pandemic and so on, was very clear. I said uh, three years ago that I felt that the motor show strategy for the brand, which we are belonging, of course, was not really something that was interesting to pursue for the future. That's why we have anticipated uh, before what has happened, that we were not going to Geneva. So, generally speaking, you know, you will not see uh, Lamborghini present in these big events because that's, uh, we want to have a different strategy. We want to be unique in presenting to media, to customer products in a unique occasion, unique uh, location where the focus will be on our products. The level of investment where we can do in comparison of the big manufacturers in development, we, we, have, we want to have our focus on our product. And this is what we already did since two years. With China, is different because the perception of China of, of, of motor show is different also from the, uh, the from the connection that uh, these motor show are giving to the customers. Because the difference that I see, we see uh, with motor show in China and motor show all around the world, that there is a huge focus of our dealership to bring the customer into the dealership, in, into the motor show. Sorry, and that's the place where. The contact with customer it's even stronger. Therefore, we will stay in China because of this reason. We saw the Hurricane Evo rear-wheel drive Spider make its debut through AR earlier this year, and it was seriously cool. Uh, but what were the what were the takeaways from that, and how will Lamborghini improve on it in the future? We, if you recall, we have said that, uh, for example, connectivity is uh, something on which we cannot uh, uh, not consider for our products because of young generation uh, customers that we have. That's why, you know, if you recall in, 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 in Las Vegas at the beginning of the year, we were the first to launch the connectivity with Alexa embedded system in our Huracan. And everyone was saying, oh, I'm not going to that. Now, because we are not sleeping and we want to show everyone that we are alive, you know, we launched the, the, the Huracan Spider rear wheel drive with the augmented reality thanks to a collaboration with Apple. That's a, a, a new form of uh, keeping even more appetite to the real products. Because as I said, we don't have to forget that we manufacture our product to be driven, to be enjoyable on track, to be enjoyable on the city, on the street, and this is our focus. All what we are doing using our digital platform is done in order to make sure that at the moment of the real event of using the car is, wow, is what you're doing. So all these things related to digitalization, to the connectivity, is to give more value to the physical you know, usage of our car. And this is really very clear on our strategy. You will see in that respect something happening very soon uh, in the same, well, let's say, in this line, uh, to, to keep, uh, you know, new things, new products uh, alive in the next month. We can, uh, because up to a moment where we don't know when the borders will be open, and above all, when the people have the feeling to go back with no problem to stay together, you know, we cannot stop this momentum. Therefore, we're going to see new products uh, in this context uh, uh, very, very soon. 
I'd like to move things over to the electric car. Um, we know the Cyan is going to be launching with a supercapacitor hybrid system. Now we know that supercapacitors are ultra lightweight and have a very high capacity. Uh, so can you see them replacing conventional EV batteries in the future? What do you think? I think that is for sure a trend on which we are working uh, and understanding what is the balance of uh, uh, the power that can generate versus, of course, the weight is very, uh, I would say, very, 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 it's not a problem, let me put it this way. Uh, so we are uh, analyzing it. We are, uh, uh, of course, that's the reason why we wanted to introduce in the SIAM, in order to see, you know, as, uh, as always, our few of um, products have this uh, uh, target of uh, being an anticipator of future technology that we can use for future products. So I cannot say that this will be part of the future project uh, on a large scale, but for sure it's uh, an area where we are investigating when there will be the right time and, uh, and how we can create this supercapacitor with more capacity in order to store as more energy, because at the end of the day that's the point of which we are working on, looking at the future. Okay, great. Um, and, and looking into the future, you've got Audi is about to launch its e-tron GT, you have the Porsche Taycan, um, obviously Lamborghini is part of the Volkswagen group, uh, does that mean that we might see a Lambo EV coming out in the near future? No rush, no crash, that's what I always say, so uh, on that respect I don't think that we need to be different, don't forget our state. Uh, we're going to be hybrid, you know the models that we're going to launch uh, soon, that's for sure. But uh, uh, with regard to the full electric Lamborghini, I don't see that happening before, uh, I would say for sure up to 2025, you will not see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, so let's move on to, to supercars, or, or should I say super SUVs. We know that the Eurus has been selling very well, um, so does that mean that we might one day see more driver focused variants of the SUV launching so maybe a performante version or even an off-road spec inspired by the LM002 what do you think yes uh, well as you know we need to our solidity is connected that we will never do uh, you know a step longer than our legs I don't know if you understand what I mean. That's a way of saying in Italy that you need to be to, 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 to understand what is the investment needed to do many variables of, of the models because uh, uh, it's has a cost implication. And, 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 and uh, that's why we're making an, an analysis of what are the requirements that come from the markets, from, from the customer, and so on. But I would say that uh, I can see uh, one possibility that is related to a more sporty one and a, 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 a for sure an hybrid version of it. But the, the timing and, 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 and the introduction of this model is connected to the evolution of the market. We are monitoring these requests that are coming to, to see if these are, um, from the business case point of view, feasible for our dimension. And just on the subject of volume, uh, we see some manufacturers limit production to ensure exclusivity, but obviously you need to sell a certain amount of cars to make money at the end of the day. How does Lamborghini strike that balance? For sure, uh, uh, we will see carefully what, what will be the effect in the medium term of the growth, because uh, uh, if the growth is uh, stable and because the market share is solid into the future, you know, the residual value of the car that will be in the market will stay high. But if, we are, if there will be too many and it's a peak of request, then the problem will be bigger for the future. Therefore, we need to be prudent on that. And, 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 and for me, this is a very key indicator of the reason why Lamborghini is so successful today. You know, we could have sold, believe me, many, many cars more, but uh, we, would have, uh, we would have been detrimental our total value of the company and we would have paid in this moment where you know we don't respect other brands are suffering you are seeing that before uh, we need to be prudent in, in our wish uh, to, to grow at all uh, 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 means because that would be a killer in, the, in this moment of uh, 
you know, of an environment that is changing so, so quickly. I'd like to change up a gear again, if I may, to the V12 hypercar, which you guys have teased so much. But you are you're still hiding from us. Um, obviously, we're all really excited about it, but... Um, is, is it more than just a track-honed weapon? I mean, could it be homologated to compete against Toyota in the new hypercar class at Le Mans? I tell you very frankly that, you know, in this moment, uh, if there was someone that was pushing to find a solution between uh, ACO regulation and IMSA regulation, was the, the guy that is speaking with you. Because I, I see potential of not uh, fragmenting, you know, the different classes, but to have a base on which then a manufacturer or a team can decide to run all around the world. And this is uh, the first thing that I can say. Uh, the other thing that I have to say is that, of course, in this moment, motorsport is under pressure. Motorsport has an opportunity to reshape in order to be, from the big group point of view, attractable. In this moment, they have other priorities. Therefore, it's important to see, uh, to see that in a medium-term approach. And the answer on that is yes, because in the short term, to be very open once again, I don't see this is happening because of different priorities that the, the bigger automotive industry have to solve. So it's important to the perspective of what is achievable and possible to in the medium term, because this is some, that is the key of the success of this project, and this is the key of the motorsport activities. In the short term, I see that it's needed. We need to stay uh, prudent because this is not really the priority for the for the, motor, for the automotive industry to invest on. I've got just one more motorsport question, um, and it's to do with customer racing. Now, Lamborghini is obviously has a very, very huge presence in customer racing, and we all love the glorious, naturally aspirated V10s of the Huracan GT3 cars. Um, but given the effect of coronavirus on the industry and on motorsport, how can you see the more casual side of the racing world developing in 2020 and 2021? I think that, uh, uh, once again, in the short term, you know, we will organize, uh, we will start our uh, European season in, in August for our uh, Super Trofeo. Uh, but of course, the limitation of, uh, that we have to respect are quite, quite, uh, quite high. Therefore, I, you know, it is obvious that uh, in the short term, the feeling of uh, having fun you know, apart from racing, you know, it's not there completely. Therefore, we need to see how this will evolve. That's why I was saying that in the, in the short term, I see that we need to be really prudent. We don't have to over boost that because we need to wait for the customer to have once again the joy of experience these, uh, these, these, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these things. Otherwise, if we're going to push too much, there, there will be a sort of a negative reaction. Therefore, I see that's why we were pushing in this moment to offer uh, and because we had the possibility for the customer to, to enjoy. But uh, in this moment, uh, I cannot see, because I have no crystal ball in front of me, or there are too many people that have crystal ball and they, they are taking decisions that they do their wrong, that uh, we, we cannot push too much. We need to stay humble. We need to see how the thing will evolve in the next month in order to prepare a great package for what we can see that is developing for the next year. For sure, 2020 and even 2021 will be the critical years. Thank you so much, Stefano. Thank you. Thank you, camera.